Today on Unpacking Truths, we're going to be looking at our vision for our life versus God's vision for our life, and how do we discern and how do we work through those questions? And trust me, God's vision is often far better than our own. Hi, I'm Pastor Kendall. And I'm Pastor Mo, and we are Unpacking Truths. Where we unpack God's Word and God's truth for life today. Everyone is seeking, and we are here to help you find hope and power in God's Word. So Mo, as we're jumping into this topic, I just want to go off topic for a quick second, because today... I've got my Diet Pepsi with me, oh, right. and I'm hoping that when we go viral, we're going to get product placement yes. points from Pepsi for this. So, I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah, you got some I, silly mug. Yeah, I got my what is Diet this? Pepsi. Yeah, just be so, careful or you'll be in my sermon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that line. So, so Mo, today we're talking, I think, about your version, your vision versus God's vision. Yeah. And I just want to start with a story. Because, my vision is amazing, by the way. Well, of course it just, is. Yeah. Um, of course, I have no doubt. Um but just a story yeah. that is both personal, but it's it's also for light of Christ that we we sense that God gave us as a church yeah. a vision back in two thousand three um, of relocating our church, okay. and uh, it there was a lot of prayer that went into it, a lot of study, a, a, a lot of conviction. The congregation voted, yeah, we need to move. So we started this journey, and we began looking for land. People made commitments, financial commitments for buying land. They didn't even know where it would be. Yeah. Um, and then God delivered the land, the, the property that we're on right now, and uh, and so we got the land. We thought we were fast-tracking on to relocating to this new campus, thought by 2010, 2011 at the latest yeah. it would happen, and then it all stopped. Mm. And we, um, part of it was just the Great Recession that happened, and we just had to go like, okay, we couldn't sell our old building, yeah. so we couldn't go forward with this. And so we were living in this tension place of, hold it, we, we've been on like five, seven years, eight years of living into God's vision, and then it just wasn't possible. Mm. And we really struggled with leadership around here because we were praying about it. We're going like, hold it, did we misunderstand God? Yeah. And some leaders at Light of Christ just sort of stepped away from the church. They said, eh, this, they're not going forward. But we didn't want to get ahead of God's timing. Yeah. And we basically had like our People of Israel had 40 years in the wilderness, yeah. but we had our 10 years in the yeah, wilderness. But, but, you, so, but God gave you manna, right? Well, you, and, God, and, yeah, and then me. God well, gave you me. You Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> and, like, and God did, but it was, we thought it was God's vision. Yeah. Then we ran into questions. We believed it still was God's vision, but yeah. we had to wait on God's timing. So, mm-hmm. um, But there are times where we have to wrestle with, is my vision for my life God's vision for my life, or am I just pursuing what I want? And yeah. so let's talk about some of that today. Yeah, well, it's funny that you say that, because I often think that it like we confuse God's vision for our heart's desire, right? And I hear so many people quote Jeremiah 29, um, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans um, to prosper you and not harm you, to give you hope in a future. And the hope and the future is, of course, the hope and future that I envisioned for myself, mm. right? Mm. And so, of course, it's not going to harm me. And I, I, what came to mind is a good friend of mine who was in her 30s. She was in her mid-30s, and she had really wanted to be married. She knew since she was a little girl, she wanted a family, she wanted kids, and, you know, she was in her mid-30s already, and she had found this great guy, and he loved the Lord, and she thought, this is it. And so they dated two years, and, you know, something had happened where they kind of took some time apart. He, he kind of was like, let's take some time apart, and she thought, we'll come back together. And she felt on her heart this desire to be with him. And she would pray all the time and bring him in prayer to God. And then she found out he had, you know, started talking to someone else and started dating someone else. And um, so she was really upset thinking, I'm so confused. Why would God let me feel this way and have this desire on my heart to be with him if it wasn't part of God's plan? And I reminded her also in Jeremiah, and I love this one, Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And I reminded her that it's not, our our heart's desires are something that we have to explore, 
But at the same time, it's also our responsibility to guard our heart, we're told in Scripture, and to guide our heart. Mm -hmm. We're told uh, in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. Mm -hmm. If we just give our heart away willy-nilly or we um, place our hearts in places and spaces that maybe aren't the best for us or meeting our needs— our life is going to go in a different direction than maybe God hadn't intended. And to also direct our hearts in Proverbs 23, 19, hear my child, be wise and direct your heart in the way. Hmm. It's our responsibility to move our heart in the ways that God has put out in scripture, right? Whatever that looks like. Um, And also when we go to God, I, Are we praying, let your will be done, God, in this situation and handing it over? Or are we often, as she admitted, she was going to God and saying, here are all the things I want and desire. You know, I hope it happens. Make it happen, God, kind of like that. And so just sitting in that space and that reality that we are called to guard our hearts and guide our hearts, and our hearts' desires aren't necessarily God's plan for us. Yeah. You know, I think the one verse that... Most um, most believers would like taken out of the Bible. Yeah, um, is Isaiah fifty five eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. Mm-hmm. That we just want God's ways to be aligned with my ways. Yeah, absolutely. And but God keeps calling us in Scripture to align our ways to His ways. Yes, and 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 that's the tension that we live in. Is is that. And do we discern that? And are we praying just, God, get on board with my plan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or are we actually submitting and saying, God, help to get my will in line with your plan? Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and Jesus set it up for us so clearly in the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. I mean, when his disciples said, how should we pray? You know, John taught his disciples how to pray. How should we pray? Yeah. And when Jesus gives them that that prayer, you know, our Father who art in heaven... Hallowed be your name, uh, your kingdom come, yeah. your will be done. We're asking, Jesus invites us to pray for God's will to be done and then say, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. That we're first praying for God's will and then asking for our needs. So often but, we pray for our needs. Right, first. but we're also projecting our will onto God well, because, of and, course, and, God's will is in alignment with what we want, right? You know, and, and Mo, I think that's where we struggle so much. I, you know, I know so many people who have really been drawn to, and I love the verses from Proverbs 3, yeah. um, 5 through 10, but just even 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own sin insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Yeah. The struggle is God gave you and me brains. Yeah. And we have to use, we have to strategize, we have to plan. And how do we know when we're just living out of my plans, my ideas, or when am I letting God into that? And and right, allowing it's a challenging. Absolutely. And I well, what I have found works, right? Is so okay. the desire on my heart, like it, di- diving deeper into that. We are called to go inward. Hmm. We are called to say, God, you know, search me, test me, um, put, you know, reveal to me the things, you know, King David cried it out, reveal to me the things of myself that I need to change, right, that mm-hmm. aren't in alignment mm-hmm. with you, and and or just explore them. Um, you know, I'll never forget Whitney Houston. She went to her aunt, who was a singer, and she said, I want to sing. And I thought it was priceless how her aunt said, well, do you just want to sing or do you want to be a singer? Because mm. those are two very different things. Mm. If you just want to sing, you can sing in the choir at church. You can sing at school. If you want to be a singer, that's a whole different ball game. Okay, that's a that's sacrifice. That's lots of work. That's giving up other things. And so, as we dig deeper, you know, my friend that I was just talking about earlier, she would started to do that work, right, with God. She'd sit with God and ask these questions and and read scripture. And she was able to discern that it wasn't so much that she felt the need for a family at that moment as much as she wanted to walk alongside children. Hmm. And then so she started doing children's ministry at church, and that really filled a big void. And she ended up meeting someone else, and it, you know, it worked out. But she was able to fill her cup and get that need met. And a part of 
her, that God created her to give away, felt it felt so right because she was able to align, right, the deepest desire of her heart, which was also kind of connected to God's will for her, but not in the way that she had envisioned it. And and that is, is how do we keep taking those desires of our hearts, our visions for our lives, our plans, and keep putting them before God's throne and saying, God, yeah. I, am I seeing this right? Am I hearing this right or not? Do you need to shift something? And and are we humble enough? Are we confident enough in who God is mm. to submit trusting that God's plans are our best, God's pl- the best for us? Absolutely. And, you know, I can't, I can't help but think of it, but one of the things that when when we label things, right, this is good, this is bad, um, this shouldn't have happened. So, for instance, one of the biggest things that happened in my life was in my 20s when all of a sudden I woke up, I wasn't able to walk. Um, my left leg wasn't working well. I had had my first surgery at nine. So my spine uh, had a, a Harrington rod, a whole like cage on it, and it was squeezing my spinal cord. And so that was happening. And so it, I had to have it decompressed. Long story short, if that had not happened and I had not had that spinal surgery, I had an amazing job in sales. I was making really good money, more than I made when I was later in my 20s or just starting um, ministry work for sure. And um, if I if that hadn't happened and I didn't end up then, you know, in a coma at one point, I had a massive pulmonary embolism and all these other things, like if that hadn't happened, I never would have been able to experience a church family from when I was a child come and be a part of that healing process for me. And they were there for me when other people weren't, and they would pray over me, and they wanted nothing in return, and they provided for my kids at different times. And it it really opened my eyes to the church in a different way and brought me back to the church. And it was it was really the beginning of, so this thing that seemed so bad became the beginning of my journey um, into what it means to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so sometimes the things that we most want to avoid, God can use for for good, and sometimes we have to go through those to get to God's real vision for our lives. Um, Interesting. The, uh, you know, I, I just... I think there are times where we we try to force our plans forward. And, oh, absolutely! And, you know, and uh, you know, and do you maybe have a that story from that? I do have a story. Yeah, ooh, give oh, it to us. It, I was but, gonna say. but Mo, it's not yeah, a story from my life. It, it's this great Bible oh, of story. Of course, sorry, it's no, it's no, a I want a story from your well, life. And you're like, yeah. God, I know you think you got this. No, I because because it. it's Balaam and the donkey. And, oh, jeez. Oh, I know it's this weird Old Testament story, but it's this powerful thing where this guy. Um, uh, uh, is this prophet is being asked to go curse the God's people. And when the bad army comes, the bad representatives come and say, go do that. And he goes, he says, give me overnight. He talks to God and God says, no, you can't go curse my people. Or they're my people. Yeah. And so Balaam says, no, I can't go with you. So they go away, but then they come back again with more money. They're yeah. offering him money oh. and, and all this. And they come back with more money the next time he goes to God and he goes, well, you told me before, what do you think? Yeah. And God says, well, go with him, but only do what I say. Oh. And so Balaam's like, okay. So he starts going. But then immediately, Scripture says, and God got angry at Balaam. And scholars have always went, well, hold it. But if God said, do it, why is God angry? And this is the whole point where Balaam's donkey talks to him later. It's this great story. Uh, uh, Where is it? Numbers. Talking donkeys. I'm I'm already in. Numbers 22. You're in. But here's the thing. I think Balaam, when the money got higher, suddenly he thought, no, that isn't what God wants me to do. Money got higher. And suddenly he started hearing God differently. Oh, now. I hear you, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, that that I think we can sometimes manipulate what God is saying to make it fit what we want the vision for our lives to oh, be. Oh yeah. And 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 <clears> so <throat> when we're so that's the danger even is when we say, well, I'm listening to God, but are you actually surrendering your plans to say God really speak yeah. to me and I'm willing to give up my vision and my plan? God, if you have a different one, until we're willing to surrender our plans, yeah. I don't think we can fully hear God's. Well, and I think that, you know, God does place things on our hearts or as we go to prayer, reveals things, but we think they're going to be laid out in a specific way. 
That's true too. And so when they're not laid out like that, then like you said, like Balaam, we can start to tweak things or maybe we're like, oh, well, of course, if I'm offered this much or, you know, it must be God wanting me to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, just that's interesting because we can sit in that space. So when it comes to discerning our vision versus God's vision for our lives, um, Frederick Buechner, Mm. um, I think of uh, kind of his process for discernment, and I Mm. love it. He says... Often you will know what is your will and God's will when what you cannot stop doing, the thing that brings you joy, the thing that you lose yourself in, and you you feel like your cup is filled, when you can take that and it meets the world's need. Does it meet a need in the world? When both of those align, he said you can almost guarantee that's God's vision and purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. Like that's a beautiful connection. You know, and, and uh, we hadn't talked about this before, but that really aligns with my sense of God's leading in my life mm. um, and, and some of what I've experienced as my calling. I was a math major in college. I mean, yeah. I, I did well That's in math. That's why you love numbers so much. I do. Oh, I yay. like numbers. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Um, the So I did well in math. I liked <clears throat> math. I could have seen a path going forward. I was having talks about being an actuarial, but everything I was reading on the side was theology. It was scripture. It was trying to understand while I was wrestling with really big questions. Can I really believe in God? How do I understand this? And sort of all that I was learning from the world and putting that together, that's where I sensed my passions were. And But I went to seminary not because I thought, God's calling me to be a pastor. It's because I was still wrestling with questions. Yeah. Were you going to come up with like a timeline for the end of the world? No. I, I was, was, I was oh, not. I, was I, I knew to... that was beyond me. But but there was just, I went to seminary. I thought, well, maybe I'll go get a PhD and be a professor. Yeah. But it, where the confirmation came is I went to seminary, and when I did my internship, and people said, wow, Ken, we really appreciate how you're pastoring us. I'm going like, oh, it, you actually want me to do this, God, because I just thought I was supposed to study it. Yeah. But sometimes it's listening to other people we can discern. I mean, I sort of thought I knew which way I was going, and God's had to adjust that along the way. Um, yeah. And uh, and so I, I, I think there is that continued sense to, are we listening to God in prayer? Are we listening to what other people are saying around us so that we can be hearing um and, and so we don't just get stuck on our vision, driving forward for my life, my vision. Yeah. How do we keep humbling ourselves to listen for God's vision and God's plan? And um, I think it is humbling ourselves and um, and wrestling with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I think that you know, so often when we think about this vision or the plan that God has for our lives, we think of career. Hmm. And yeah. I don't necessarily think that's the most important thing that God created us for is like, because you're going to do this job and only yeah. if you do this job or this yeah. thing or um, that somehow oh, you have fulfilled my purpose for you. And rather, I think it's um, not what we do as much as who we become. Oh, I love that. We mm-hmm. are all on this trajectory to look like Christ. And so what does that look like? In Romans eight twenty nine, it says, God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. Like that is our, that is our purpose. That's God's vision for our life. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing to spiritually mature and grow? And then God's two greatest commandments are to love, right? Not only God, but love others, love God's children, even our enemies. And so what are we doing in life where we're on that path to look like Christ, to love others, um, even when it's hard to be forgiving, to just live in that space and allow ourselves to die to ourselves really is what it is, is to constantly die to what we really want to do. Yeah. Mo, I love that because I think there is, you know, People so often wrestle. How do I know? Should I take this job or that job? Yeah. And we wrestle at those what they seem like the big crossroads, but maybe the big crossroads are how am I treating my neighbor right now? Am yeah. I loving them or am I not loving them? Right. And do we wrestle as much with that, the shaping of the character versus the shaping of the career or the direction? Absolutely. That's I, great. I love Mother Teresa, the little the little flower that she, they, they call her the little flower, but she passed at 24. And she said that all I want to do is love and love others, little acts of love, 
and a childlike trust is how we're to live our lives. And she led such a profound life in her short years. And so, I, and I tell my daughters all the time when they were like, oh, you, you know, they were kind of, you know, hesitant on what they were doing and where they were supposed to go as, you know, you're entering college and what do I major in and all that stuff. And I said, I don't think God cares what you do as much as God cares who you become. I love that. I, I think that is, I, I think God could go like, Mo, I could use you here or here or here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But who are who's the person you're becoming, Mo? That's right. what I'm concerned about. Right. Are we looking like Christ? That's the big point. Are you looking like Christ? And so... You know, um, yeah, this is, it's good stuff. But as we continue to discern and community and with God, and that is the end goal, look like Christ. Love it. One question before we go for all of you, um, feel free to comment, uh, engage uh, with any questions you want us to follow up with, and taking a quick poll, Coke or Pepsi? Oh, Please, geez. we want Pepsi to win. No, monster. See you soon. Monster energy drink. Next time on Unpacking Truths. If I'm eating too much, right, especially uh, the wrong kinds of food, I found that like a lot of sugar, a lot of sweets, I get like lethargic and my brain can't process. And so I think that there there is a way that God wants us to um, honor I, honor him in everything we do, right? Glorify him in everything we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think we could be used to the full capacity for which we've been created if we're not taking care of our temples, right? Like our bodies, because I mean, we don't have the energy or the wherewithal or the, you know, stamina to do whatever it is we're being called to do. Thanks for tuning in. If anything we said brought up any questions or ideas, let's keep the conversation going in the comments below or email us at unpackingtruths at lochurch.com. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can continue helping people unpack God's truth for their lives.